So warning the Wi-Fi here really, really hard to connect. There's a coffee shop right down there. So hopefully we can connect through there. Uh, the reason I need it is first of all, I need to find oh, the bus information getting downtown. And number two, exchange rates. Now I've been looking around all the places to see what ATM they have and this is the only one I can find. See, this is a private ATM uh, and it's going to cost you an arm and a leg in terms of service fees so I don't recommend it because this is only a layover. You're most likely not going to spend more than something like $50 to $100. Given the fact that it's so little, really doesn't make much difference if you just go to an exchange place. Yes, the rate sucks but come on, at like less than $100 doesn't make that much difference. Now, after looking at the spray here at the exchange, honestly, it's absolutely notorious. Uh, but I think there might be some ATM outside the arrival gate. Let's have a look. There you go. And there's also another exchange place over there as well. Honestly, if you really need the cash, then just go and exchange it there. Look like there's no other like ATMs. Uh, I decided I'm just going to like go and take a bus. And how I'm going to pay for it is by um, credit cards. Actually, the smarter way is to use a debit or credit card to pay for the bus fare to get to the city center. This is also the best and the most inexpensive way to get around the city. From there, you'll find a lot of ATMs without fees. If you offer a predetermined exchange rate, refuse it and <laughs> just go with the flow. If you're gonna use a uh, bus option, then take the bus once I'm happy to say. It's taking them uh, directly to the old center. Uh, this ride should be for more than 40 minutes. If it takes more than 30 minutes, then you get the uh, most likely from the wrong bus. Alright, so I'm getting off next. Everything is around this area when it comes to old town attractions. The best place to stay for a long layover is to sleep for free at the local McDonald's. <laughs> Just joking. I mean, stay near the old town. It's walking distance to most of the historic landmarks. You can easily get there by getting off at the last stop for bus 175 directly from the airport. Sally, I was exhausted from my flight, so no picking out lovely Polish ladies. What I really need is a good night of good sex. I mean, uh, I mean good rest. Uh, because I'm going to get up early next morning. After all, unless you can slow down the clock, <laughs> five hours isn't a lot of time to see the city. If you got a few dollars, you got bike share all of the city. Even better, if you got a smartphone. Check this out. There's line bikes and boat bikes. They are scooters park all over the city. I think this might be a great uh, choice getting between the attractions since it <laughs> saves you lots of time without waiting for buses or more expensive taxis. With that being said, I think we reached our first place, the Presidential Palace here in Warsaw. Since 1994, the Presidential Palace has been the official seat of the President of the Republic of Poland. It's the largest palace in Warsaw, consists of four-story main body and two lower side wings. The palace was rebuilt many times. In front of the Presidential Palace, there is a monument of Prince Józef Poniatowski sitting on a horse and holding a sword in his right hand. Visiting the Presidential Palace is possible for organized groups from Monday to Friday from 9 a.m. to 3 p.m. The tour is free, guided, and takes about 60 minutes. The Presidential Palace, there is a 
beautiful church here. It's actually a cemetery uh, for priests. And I hope it's open because it looks really, really, really nice outside. The beautiful architectures. The official name is the Church of the Assumption of Mary and St. Joseph the Bridegroom, commonly known as a Carmelite Church. This Roman Catholic Church is Warsaw's most noble neoclassical facade, created in 1761 to 83. Although it is one of the most beautiful churches in Warsaw, it is rarely shown or mentioned by the people of Warsaw in the local city guides. The present church is the second building to arise here, erected over the site of a wooden church originally constructed for the Desikal Carmelite Order in 1643 and burned down by the Swedes and Brandenburg Germans in the 1650s. The main altar is that of St. Joseph from the 18th century. Before that, there were already two altars here. The first altar, the painting of Joseph and the Christ child remain. From the second, the figure of St. Teresa and St. John of the Cross. In 2012, the altar of the St. Joseph was renovated. Behind the altar, another fasco from the second half of the 17th century was found and believed to be from the first phase of construction, but was not finished because of Polish-Swedish war interrupted the construction work. 